हेलो गाइस हियर वी हैव क्वेश्चन नंबर 11 फ्रॉम चेक योर अंडरस्टैंडिंग एक्सरसाइज ऑफ द चैप्टर री एंड वेव ऑप्टिक्स सो आई लेट्स लुक एट द क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट लेंस इज ए एंड बी ऑफ फोकल लेंस 7.5 सेंटीमीटर एंड 20 सेंटीमीटर रिस्पेक्टिवली आर प्लेस्ड एट अ डिस्टेंस इज 15 सेंटीमीटर एंड 60 सेंटीमीटर फ्रॉम अ पॉइंट सोर्स ऑफ लाइट एस द सोर्स इज ऑन कॉमन प्रिंसिपल एक्सिस ऑफ द लेंसेस अपर्चर रेडियाई ऑफ these lenses are 2 cm and 10 cm respectively if a screen is placed behind the lens b a circular light spot will be obtained on it at what distance from lens b should the screen be placed so that the light spot on it has a minimum radius also find the radius of this spot so if you want to try it on your own uh, you can do it now so yeah, if you want a hint here it is try drawing a, a ray diagram first so if you want to try uh, some uh, ray diagrams uh, you can do it now So yeah, now let's look at the solution. So first of all, uh, we need to see how the rays will go. So uh, in this, I have considered three cases, uh, three types of uh, rays. So the first, let's consider the rays passing through the first lens as shown in the diagram. So th- we will be considering the rays which will pass through A A one, which is the first lens. So first of all, using the lens formula, what we get is one by V minus one by U equals to one by F one, where F one is the focal length for the first lens. what we get is the value of v which is the image for the first lens comes out to be 15 cm so from here what we can say that all the rays uh, emanating from s and coming in contact with the first lens will eventually pass through s1 which is at a distance of 15 cm from the figure from the uh, and in the figure i have shown the extreme rays which will enclose all the other rays passing through the first lens so here we can see that they will pa- all the rays will pass through this point which is s1 and uh, now these rays will go on and come into contact with the second lens at c and d here i have assumed the c the c and d points now for a uh, second lens we can consider the object to be at s1 because uh, the rays are com- uh, appearing to be coming f- to from s1 so the object can be considered a- to be present at s1 for the l- refraction at lens 2 so from here what we c- uh, can get by again by lens formula what we get is one uh 1 by v minus 1 by u equals to 1 by f2 so from here the value of v which is the uh, image for the second lens comes out to be 60 cm so the image will form at this point which is s2 so again what we can say from here is that all the rays passing through the second lens which pass through first lens will pass through s2 which is at a distance of 60 cm from the second lens and in the diagram again as the extreme rays have been drawn these will enclose all the other rays so this is the uh, case one now the second type of rays now let's consider the rays which directly pra- pass through the second lens and we can observe that the sizes of the lens allow such rays to exist because uh, here we can clearly see that the angles obtained by the lens a uh, first lens which is a a1 and the angles obtained of the lens b v1 are such that the there will be some rays which will uh, pass in uh, this reason and which will directly uh, come into contact with lens 2 so from here again uh, by using the lens uh, formula for this lens considering the object to be s what we get is 1 by v minus 1 by u equals to 1 by f2 so 1 by v minus 1 minus 1 by 1 minus 60 where uh, u is minus 60 uh, equals to 1 by 20 so the value of v comes out to be 30 cm so the image will be forming at s3 and uh, so all the rays which uh, started at s should uh, pass through this point s3 so again that's what written here and similarly there will be a th- third class of rays which will pass through neither lens and will directly appear on the screen but uh, they aren't important for this question uh, so we'll just neglect them so now if we consider a superposition of all these three classes gives us all the rays and if we place a screen beyond the lens uh two we can see from the diagram that how will the rings will be obtained on the screen and from the diagram it is clear that the minimum radius of the ring formed on the screen it should be placed on a in the plane marked with the violet color so from here we can see that if we for example if we place the screen here the uh rings will be light will be formed in this region in this region and in this region so the ring radius of the ring will be this much and uh, similarly if we uh, place it here again the light will be forming in this region this region and this region so here the radius of the rings will be that 
So from here, it can be clearly seen that the uh, minimum radius uh, will occur here. The radius is decreasing, and again it is decreasing along the green ray. And after this point, the radius again starts increasing, and it will be continuously increasing till infinity. So from here, the minimum uh, radius which can be formed should be at this point. So now we need to find this point. So and uh, now, as it is clear that this position is between S3 and S2. So what we get from here is that uh, here I assume the distance of the screen to be x from S3 and it will uh, so obviously it will be 30 minus x from the S2 point. So uh, by using the slopes of the rays, we can calculate the slope of the rays using uh, these uh, the lens of the lens and uh, here I've written the slopes of the uh, two required rays whose in intersection we have to observe. So from here uh, equating the slopes at this point. Uh, from the two rays what we get is x by 3 equals to 30 minus x by 15 so x equals to 5 so x is the distance from the s3 point so from the lens 2 this distance will be 30 plus x which so hence the screen must be placed at a distance of 35 centimeter from the second lens for smallest spot on the screen and the radius of the spot will be x by 3 this value so from here x by 3 will be 5 by 3 centimeter so yeah that's the final answer thank you